This is the first impression video of the recently aired Chinese drama. 下一站是幸福 Find yourself. Hi, you're watching Avenue X, where junkie on good storytelling shares their thoughts, knowledge, and occasional weird ideas on stories and how they're told. Just a reminder: the Express VPN deal is still available on my channel. Find the link in the description, or go straight to expressvpn.com/avenuex to purchase a annual plan with three months extra for free. 下一站是幸福 not to be mixed up with. 下一站，幸福 aired on past Sunday. This is a 41 episode drama that goes on satellite TV, Hunan TV, and also Mango TV online. It's a contemporary drama set in Shanghai and is led by Song Qian, Song Weilong, Wang Yaoqing, Zhang Yujian. A lot of familiar faces if you've been paying attention to Chinese drama land in the past few years. Initially, this drama was scheduled for January 28th, but due to the coronavirus outbreak in China and a lot of people canceling their travel. Plans become basically self-quarantine at home. The clever businessman of Hunan TV decided to pull this drama forward in schedule. It's such a clever decision because as soon as it went live, it has been on trending of Chinese Weibo every day. Different topics related to this drama. It also is climbing really fast at the view count statistics, and it's been mentioned on my、uh, social media feed. All the time by different accounts, so I can sense this drama might become the biggest winner, the black horse, during Chinese New Year slot. This drama actually finished filming at the end of 2018, so it's one of those dramas that have been canned for a while last year. You could say this is actually the good fortune of this drama. It came out at the exact right time, allowing it to get a bigger audience demographics than it would usually get. I had initially planned to make a first impression video about. This drama early February, but I couldn't wait. I've watched all the episodes that have come out so far. At the moment, I'm making this video, and I love this drama. I'm really happy to see this drama, so I gave it priority. There are quite a lot of aspects of this drama that I really like, so I'm gonna talk about them, and hopefully, my explanation of things can help you decide whether you want to join in this watch. Party. So the first thing I really like about this drama is it is focusing on this particular group, picking out the person to represent the group called leftover women in China. That's not a very nice term to call anyone, but basically it describes women who are probably in their late twenties, thirties, still not married, who have financial freedom to sustain their own life, being quite happy being single. But then there's a lot of societal pressure of them getting married, coming from their parents, relatives. In the drama, our lead character He Fan. Played by Song Qian is such a woman. She is 32 years old, working as administrative supervisor at an interior design company. She's never been in a relationship. She is still waiting for her kind of first love, proper first love. So the original title of the drama is actually 资深少女的初恋 senior young maiden's first love. I'm guessing because that title sounds so.、Um, Young romantic story oriented, it may not bring in the older generation of audiences. So that might be the reason that they changed the title to "Next Stop is Happiness." is very vague, so that it can attract bigger demographics. That's what I'm guessing why they did it. Anyway, our lead character, although she's at this age, that's considered to be a little bit too old for the marriage market. She's still quite confident. And she's still dreaming of her love. That to finally someday show up in her life, who is very different from her expectation. Who is somebody who's much younger. The character is played by Song Weilong, named Yuan Song, who is a design major, university graduate. Who ended up being an intern at the interior design office that our female lead works at. He is also the student of a prof named He Canyang, who is the twin brother of our female lead. Later, you'll discover that actually every main character in this drama is somehow related in other ways. It's like very six degrees with all the main characters. The older woman and younger man relationship. Is not a typical relationship that you find in Chinese contemporary dramas. So that's also a very important aspect that attract, I think, me and also a lot of 
audiences into the story, trying to see how they play at that dynamic. But once you get into the story, you get the side of the main character's dilemma of her situation, dealing with her job, dealing with her friends, dealing with the people surrounding her, the society's invisible pressure. You also get a super sweet, super romantic, a lot of candy and sugar sprinkle between the younger guy, super good looking, model like <laughs> Song Weilong and super pretty Song Qian. But those are not the only things that would make you really happy watching this drama. This drama actually surprised me with a lot more than I expected, by which I mean first it has created some extremely interesting supporting roles. Wang Yaqing would be considered as the second male lead. He is in every way, I think, in a society's opinion, a more suitable partner for Song Qian's character. Similar age range, very successful in his own career, much more stable, kind of arrived at this certain status of his world, whereas our male lead character is still a young, fresh graduate. But Wang Yaqing as the second male lead is not annoying. These days, it's actually so rare to see in Chinese drama land that the second lead character, who is a clear threat to the main lead's relationship, is not a bad person, annoying person, a person you want to slap across their face, who uses really ugly strategies to get what they want, who are manipulative in a really bad way, who are just there to create troubles, who are just bad for being bad sake. But Wang Yaoqing's character is not like that. He does things in a very intelligent, very fair and square way. It's like, yes, love is a war that you need to use strategies and clever and trying to outwit each other. But I'm not going to do those ugly, sabotaging, low level things you, that are so tropey in Dramaland. He's actually a very good, well-rounded, intelligent, funny character who doesn't resolve to very lowly measures to get what he wants, but definitely heads into this competition with all his might. And his comical timing and his delivery of his character just brings that character to screen so fully and three-dimensional. I think he's my favorite second lead character who is actually a threat to the main lead's relationship I've seen in recent years. This drama also gives you many other supporting roles that are very well developed. So when you are not looking at the main lead couple storyline, you don't feel bored at all. You are actually interested in all of those sub storylines. For example, our female lead's twin brother played by Zhang Yujian. He has been in a lot of romantic dramas recently. A lot of people really like him. And in this drama, his twin brother role of our female lead is so well fleshed out. You can definitely sense the real bond in the family, in the twin relationship. He will definitely get his own romantic line, although it's not super clear right now. I'm sensing there's a direction of that um, probably between him and a student of his. I'm really curious to see how that line develops. You also have our female lead's parents who are just the best parents you can have in this kind of situation. And they are the coolest parents and they're both so dramatic. Like they act, they literally act in front of their children. And they do have that a little bit dramatized reactions and ways of doing things, but they're also very well played by those two <laughs> very good actor and actress. And when those four people sit down at a dinner table as a family, you can sense it's a dramatized version of a family, but in the way so comfortably played out in all their interactions and details that they don't look fake. They may look dramatic, but the emotional attachment of their strong bond, the dynamics feel really authentic. Also, this drama has three absolutely adorable dogs. Beileye, Hong Shao Rou, and Zhao Taohua. The names are funny. Beileye is the Mandarin court, sort of a title of an aristocratic prince. Hong Shao Rou is a dish. <laughs> And then Zhao Taohua is bringing in romantic relationship. And I'm guessing Hong Xiaorou is actually the same dog that you see in Love and Destiny, the Xiao Bai. When you look at the extra feature stuff of Love and Destiny, it's actually mentioned that the dog's real name is Hong Xiaorou. So I think maybe they use the same dog. I'm not sure. If anybody knows about that, please do let me know. That would be so cool. It's like a six degrees between dramas. So this drama has a lot of super interesting characters, very well played out dynamics, many, many laughing 
out loud moments. And obviously, we cannot ignore the super sweet and sugary stuff between our two leads, the dynamic between older woman and much younger man, and how they're trying to figure out their path of their relationship in a society that really doesn't quite, um, you know, look at this type of relationship with a kind eye. I've seen a couple of short videos, extra features of how they filmed certain extremely sweet scenes. From looking at how the director works in those extra features, his direction and how he tease out each scene and play out that rhythm reminds me strongly of how Lin Yufen directed Zhang Zhen and Nini in Love and Destiny. Uh, when I watched that drama's extra feature. Although it will be, you know, quite long, 40 episodes, and usually contemporary dramas being that long tend to have dragging problems. I really do hope because of this director's involvement, it actually wouldn't be a problem. The 40 episodes will be a full 40 episodes ride of fun, happy, sweet, but also sometimes thought-provoking moments. Judging by how they did certain things, it's almost like the script didn't actually go to super detail about exactly what everyone says in every scene. A lot of the scenes are improvised, designed on the set, designed by the actors themselves. This director is also the director who is currently directing a drama that also features Song Weilong, also Tan Songyun and Zhang Xincheng, or the, uh, In the Name of the Family. And it's also written by the same husband and wife team writers who wrote Find Yourself. If this drama, progress as expected and didn't have clear big problems halfway down the line, then I would be so looking forward to the new drama that's currently been filmed. So at the end of this video, I would highly recommend you check out this drama. I think it's the happiest drama, the drama that made me laugh most in January this year, especially during this period of time when so many very depressing things are going on. It's kind of a really sweet antidote to that um, overall extremely depressing mood. Before I go, just remind everyone, please keep an eye on the development of this outbreak, especially in the region that you are living in, and take reasonable precautions to protect your safety. Thank you for watching Avenue X. I'll see you in my next video. Meanwhile, live long and happy drama watching.